Assessment Challenges for English Language Learners Balancing Content and Language When a CBI student gives a poor answer, can we tell whether the source of the problem is the student's understanding of the content or if the problem is a language-related issue? Unfortunately, the answer is frequently no. CPI teachers tend to give students who have better target language skills higher content grades. Usually, we grade content and language at the same time, that is, through the same test or same assignment. However, to make sure that our grading is fair and valid, we should be clear which part of the grade comes from content and which part comes from language. This process begins at the planning stage. First, we should set clear content learning objectives and clear language learning objectives. Next, we should plan our lessons to address the objectives we have set. Recall that we focused on these issues in Module 4. Then, as we are preparing our means of assessment, we need to keep in mind these separate learning objectives and how they were taught. For fair and valid assessment in CBI, our assessments should challenge students according to the learning objectives. We want to eliminate, as much as possible, sources of difficulty that are not related to our learning objectives. To help us think about this, we can use this matrix. This matrix was originally proposed by Cummins, adapted by Coyle et al., and then even further developed by Leal. This matrix is divided into four quadrants and helps us separate task difficulty that is associated with content versus task difficulty that is associated with language. Linguistic demands versus cognitive demands. Probably it is easy for you as an EFL teacher to know right away what we mean by high linguistic demands. These are any items that are difficult because of the language skills required. It could be reading, writing, listening, or speaking. The difficulties that are referred to by cognitive demands could have multiple sources. One is how abstract the item is. If an item or task is difficult for the students to relate to, that is, if they cannot relate it to their own lives, then it is abstract, and this means that it is more cognitively demanding. Another source of cognitive difficulty relates to the level of thinking that it requires. Low-level thinking processes refer to Bloom's taxonomy, where the student simply produces memorized information, are less cognitively demanding. Higher-level thinking, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating, are more cognitively demanding. Items in Quadrant 1 are easy both in terms of linguistic or language demands and cognitive or content demands. For testing purposes, these might be useful as a warm-up to help students gain confidence. When we are focused primarily on testing content, we will want to have most of our items belonging to Quadrant 2. That is, we want to challenge our students in terms of the content without making the linguistic demands too high. Items that fall into Quadrant 3 will probably represent too much of a cognitive load on our students. It should be noted that for teaching purposes, it is a good practice to start a lesson in Quadrant 1, perhaps by reviewing related vocabulary, and then moving students to Quadrant 2, and finally to Quadrant 3. Language Challenges 
Here are a few specific ways that language can present an unnecessary source of difficulty to CBI students in a testing situation. Instructions. Even if the test instructions are similar to or the same as instructions that students have seen before, the students may not be able to understand them. If you expect your students to learn the language of the instructions, you should teach this in class. Some teachers even share with their students ahead of time the instructions they will see on a test. If this does not fit with your learning objectives or teaching philosophy, you should simplify the instructions on the test or help your students understand them on the day of the test. New modes of presentation. In class, you probably offer a lot of scaffolding and contextualization. If the first time you take that away is during a test situation, your students may not know what to do. For example, if you are a teacher who uses a lot of gestures when talking, but on test day you stop using hand gestures, this could be too much of a difference for students. You should either gradually use less and less scaffolding in class as you approach a test date, or you should provide the same kind of scaffolding to students on the test day as you do during regular class. Readability. All of the factors mentioned in Module 2 in readability affect the linguistic demands of test items. This includes word frequency, syntactic or grammatical complexity, visual layout, and length. In a study done by Abedi and colleagues, L2 speakers were found to do worse than their native speaking peers on test items that were three lines or longer. Culture. We should remember that culture also plays a role in how well a person can understand something. If you use a test item from an OER, check to see if there are cultural references that your students might not understand. As a more advanced English speaker, you might not even think about the culturally specific nature of something in a test item. Remember to take a moment to ask yourself if there are some culturally specific features of your test items that are not related to your learning objectives. Here are the references used for this text. <laughs>